What's up, YouTube? It is your boy, JB, and we are here today with um, a new review for... What show we want to do first? Let's go ahead and do Love at the Lockup since that's the show, the show that I just finished watching. Love at the Lockup, Season 3, Episode 38, and the episode was titled Imaginary Boyfriend with a question mark. All right, you guys. This episode was hella interesting. I will say that much. It's, it was interesting as hell. I really should move my car. I don't know, because, I mean, you guys see all that sunlight, but it is what it is. Y'all can still see me nonetheless. Um, now, before we get into this review, if you guys are watching this video or any other video on the channel and you guys are not already, what? Subscribe to the channel. Why are we still doing this? Like, why are we still doing this date? And I'm the one that's foot with the bill at the end of the day. You know what I'm saying? Hit that subscribe button, you guys. Hit that like button and hit the notification bell button, you guys. Now, with that out of the way, without further ado, let's go ahead and talk about Love After Lockup. Interesting episode. All right, you guys, let's start off with Stan and Lisa, right? So you guys remember in the last episode with Stan and Lisa, Stan went to pick up Lisa from um, prison, right? When um, I saw Stan, and, when Stan finally saw Lisa, the interactions between Stan and Lisa was really, um, how do I want to say this in the nicest way? Hell, it, it really, it was the, actually, it was the most awkward interaction that I've ever saw in my life. I'm like, damn. The way you've been talking about Lisa and the stuff, you know, the, the, you, the way you've been talking about Lisa, you and her in the basement and all the sex that y'all have had, I was not expecting this awkward interaction. Who else had an awkward interaction in Love at the Lockup history? Vincent and Amber. It was just as cringy as Vincent and Amber was in season. See, Love at the Lockup with these seasons, I just never know the numbers. Was it season two? No, we met Vincent and Amber season. No, we met Vincent and Amber season two. It was just as awkward as that situation. Cause I mean, he's like, give me a hug, give, 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 give me a hug, G -g -g give me a kiss. It's like no, Stan, absolutely not. Now, Lisa, you told Stan you look like a boy. You did not tell Stan that you looked like a stud. Girl, I thought you was a, when she walked out. I'm like, damn. This is a stud. I mean, the way she had that haircut, she gave me a white stud. I was like, girl, you look like a stud, but whatever. And you don't look like you're 39 years old. That's number two. You do not look 39. Lisa is giving me hard 45 or 50. So we see, so Lisa and Stan are in the car. They're driving, right? Things, like I said, things were just awkward. Give me a give me a hug and it was just the, the most awkward interaction that i've ever saw besides vincent and amber right so then they're talking about how they were again and i'm, I'm like how is this interaction so awkward but let lisa tell it especially when she showed us that picture of that straight jacket i'm like so y'all have kinky sex but you two are acting like you just met each other for the first fucking time but okay so then we find we go a little bit deep into Miss Lisa, right? So Lisa tells us that she was married when she was 17 years old. That husband abused her. And when she left him, he took pills and killed himself. I'm like, well, damn. And then she got married to her second husband a year later. She thought she was divorced from him, but she's, she's I guess she's not divorced from him at this point. So then she tells she the third husband, she says, I'm not talking about that one. So now Lisa got to get a divorce from two men. She also tells us she's into women. I'm like, I, I, I'm not surprised with this stud haircut you got. Yeah. So her son calls. So Lisa also lets us know that she has three kids, right? Her oldest son is 22. And um, what else? So her son called her. I don't know what her son is going through, but obviously he's going through something because she said that he told her that he feels like no one cares about him, which that's a really sad thing for someone any of any age to feel that no one cares for them or no one loves them, right? Stan, this was the most inopportune time to try to tell her to break away from her family. I'm like, really, Stan? She's telling you her son just said that he feels like nobody loves him. And you're going to sit here with this ugly ass to pay with this bad die job and say, oh, well, maybe you should break away from your family the fudge 
You know what? She's better than me. She is better than I am. Let's move on. Brittany and Ray. Oh, my God. The whole entire time that I was looking at Brittany and more specifically Brittany, I kept looking at Brittany and that wig and I'm just like, oh, my God. I wish a good gush of wind would just come by and blow that wig the hell off. Like, I just kept looking at that synthetic ass wig. I was like, oh, my God. I just like, I just wish the wind would just whoosh and blow it through, blow it like a, like a, like some tumbleweed because that's what it looks like. It looks like tumbleweed. So, you guys remember in the last episode with Ray, they were meeting Ray at a gas station, right? So, come to find out, they were not supposed to meet Ray there, that Ray was supposed to ride the bus somewhere. I guess Ray was supposed to ride the bus to the, I don't know where, because they took him there, they put him back, and they taken him back to the prison, right? So, they're trying to figure out if they can get Ray from the prison or not. And Grandma said, well, you know, she doesn't know. I don't, you know, we're going to talk about that in just a minute. So, they do, you know, they follow the bus back to the prison, and they're able to get Ray. Ray is actually a, a good-looking guy. He doesn't look 29, though, however. I'm just being honest with you guys. He didn't look 29 to me. He actually looked a little bit, he actually looked a little older than 29. Like, he might be about 35. No shade, but he looked a little bit older. And after after he said what he said, I'm like, okay, now I see why. So, Ray has had an interesting life. Ray has definitely had a bit of an interesting life. And I and when Ray was telling his story, I actually really wanted to cry. But I, 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 I kept my, you know, I kept it, I kept it G. I didn't cry. But Ray told his story that, you know, his mom was shot when he was a kid, right? His mom was shot five times in the chest, he said. And she was left for dead in a van. And they still don't know who killed his mother, which that is terrible, man. You know, actually, I know a similar, I have a similar, I know a similar story to a similar story, and it actually happened down there in Houston. I have a cousin that I used to be afraid of. My cousin, his name was KY Jr., right? I, I, I mean, I met him, well, I knew him ever since I was a kid, I knew him, but he, he scared me one time. Cause he, he, we were at my aunt, one of my aunt's house, and my grandma said, "Sit, sit right there next to your cousin." I was like, "Okay." So, <laughs> I don't know why my cousin decided to mess with a. I was a seven-year-old little boy, seven years old, right? Mind you, seven. So my cousin, he was sitting on the couch. I didn't. I thought he was. I thought he was asleep, cause he had sunglasses on, and I was looking at him, cause I, I couldn't tell if he was looking at me or not. And I was just looking at him like, because I kept looking at him, because I could see, I, I kept looking like, is he awake? Like, what's going on with him? So he was, he sat, he was literally sitting still. And when I trying to, when I was trying to figure out if he was awake or if he was awake or if he was looking at me, because the sunglasses were really creeping the hell out of me, because they were so dark, he jumped at me. And I ran to my grandma, he started laughing. <laughs> but um, to, 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 to um, wrap that story up, actually what happened with my cousin is he had got he i think he had a girlfriend or no he had actually just got married he had just got married and he had just got a job he he had at his job that he was working at he had just gotten a promotion got a new truck and everything and one i don't know if it was it was actually because he worked a late night shift so they went out to his car and found him in the car dead and to my knowledge I don't think they ever found out who killed him. I don't believe they ever found out who killed my cousin. So I, I felt Ray in that situation. But it's just sad that you leave, like you kill people and you leave them in a the car. Actually, I know, another, I know another situation like that. In a neighborhood where my grandmother's house is, that happened. Now, mind you, it's a little, it's a little bit of a drug neighborhood. <laughs> and there was a man, I'm not laughing at this situation. I'm just laughing about the fact that who and they, who would do this? So they left. They they killed a man, right? In this neighborhood, they killed him and left him in the car overnight. No one knew the man was dead until the next morning when everybody woke up. But yeah, um. So yeah, Ray told us that you know he's you know he started stealing and more specifically drugs to numb the pain. I'm like, oh my god, like I just couldn't. I mean, I know what it's like 
to lose your mother, but I, I, my mom, she just, you know, she passed away of natural causes. You know what I'm saying? Well, not natural causes. She had an, she had an aneurysm, but still, no one killed my mother. So I don't know what that would feel like to have, you know, your have that rob, have be robbed of being able to grow up with your mother, have a relationship with your mother. I don't know what that feels like. So I just can't imagine what Ray actually felt and what he went through. And my heart really does go out to Ray. And I, like I said, I, I felt bad for him. And I, in that scene, I really was, I was, you know, I was on the verge of crying because I was like, damn, that's, he's had a rough life. He's had a rough life. And her, and then Brittany think he comes from the hood. Girl, shut up. Let's move on. All right, you guys, this is probably going to be a long review. I didn't realize that. Oh, shit. I forgot to talk about something with Ray. So, we'll, this will be Ray. This will be a continuation of Ray. So, with the Ray. Ray, now here's the thing that I was confused about. Brittany is talking about getting Ray to a halfway house. So, I guess Ray's going to stay in the halfway house for on, for so long. And then he's going to come home with her. Because Brittany was talking, the way Brittany was talking to, to us last week, I thought Ray was paroling to Brittany and not to a halfway house. But he's going to the halfway house. And they're on a race against time to get him to the halfway house. But they do eventually make it to the halfway house. Brittany gets out. She, you know, they kiss. And actually, here's the thing. The family, I, I got a lot of respect for his family. Because when they picked Ray up, Brittany was the first one out. The, Brittany got out the car and ran to Ray. Instead of his his mom, his grandmother, his father. You run toward him? Okay. Whatever. Then this dingbat talking about she wants two kids back to back. Girl, you are stupid. And once again, I wanted that wind to blow that synthetic wig away. Now we're moving on. All right, you guys. Next up, child Rachel and Doug. Baby, Rachel and Doug. I really sat there in amazement. And it wasn't good amazement. It was, I was like, oh my God. I have never, I mean, as long as I've been watching Love After Lockup and Life After Lockup, I have never saw this before. Know what? Take that back. Yes, we have. What was the girl that had sex in the woods? Oh my God. What was her name? The one that had sex in the woods. Girl, how do you have sex in the woods? I forgot about her. Well, actually, this takes the cake. Does it? Does this take the cake? And yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. This has to take the cake. Because Doug and Rachel. <laughs> Doug is out there. So I can see that Doug is the type that doesn't like to follow the rules. Because Brit, I mean Rachel's like, you got to put on your seatbelt. You got to put on your seatbelt. He didn't want to put his seatbelt on, right? Okay. That's interesting. This man just walked in a circle. A whole circle. Okay. Kind of like, you know how like when you march? That's kind of what he did. Um, yeah, back to this. So, Doug. Oh, my God, Doug. I know that they have a go. Now, in their cars, they have GoPro. Oh, I need, that's what I need to buy. I should buy a GoPro. I think I'm going to buy a GoPro for the car. So, that way I don't use my phone. I think I'm going to buy a GoPro. I'm going to look into seeing how much a GoPro costs. So that way people don't think that I'm talking to myself, which I technically am talking to myself. But I think that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to buy me a GoPro. How much do those run for? That's what we're going to do is we're going to buy a GoPro. But I'm not going to leave this on the car. I'm going to keep it on my person. But yeah, we're going to buy a GoPro. So yeah, they have a I'm like, and the fact that Doug literally sat there and was fingering Rachel, I was like, oh my God. And her eyes, you can see her eyes rolling in the back of her head. I was like, well, damn, he must be digging hard. Because I was like, oh, my God. When I finally realized what he was doing, I looked. I was like, oh, my God. Doug is fingering her. And then when they got to the hotel room, I'm like, it got even worse when they got to the hotel room, right? If you, If Rachel didn't tell you she didn't have any panties on... You knew it in this scene when Doug was, I mean, they were on top of, Doug was on top of her. 
they were dry humping. Well, he was dry humping her. Because, I'm again, like I said, she didn't have no panties on. He was dry humping her. I'm like, I don't even think he, I don't even think he's dry humping her, to be quite honest with you. I'm like, I don't even think Doug is dry humping her. Because his orange shorts were down past his, you know, his waist. I'm like, yeah, I don't think they dry humping. And I'm like, why are a cameraman still in this room? Because I'm like, when, especially when her legs went back and you could see them heels and her, her skin. I'm like, um, producers, cameramen, it's time for y'all to go. Like, y'all don't see that they about to have sex. Like, they don't care. I know Doug beat that, beat the brace off of her. Now, Rachel, um, I don't know how you don't see this with Doug. Um, I think, I don't know if Doug necessarily loves you. I, I don't get that Doug loves you. I, I really, truly don't get that vibe that he loves you, my love. I think that Doug was just looking for, um, you know, a place for him and his son to stay. And, you know, a warm vagina to, you know, pounce up and down in. I, I'm just going to be honest with you. I don't think that Doug really loves you like that. I think Doug is using you and he's manipulating he's, and, and he's manipulating you. Um, now, when Doug was talking about little Dougie, I wouldn't blame little Dougie for punching Doug straight dead in the nuts because Dougie was a year, a, a year and a half. I think he said when he went to prison, he got out again when Dougie was seven and then he went back to jail again. You are an absentee father, sir. Yeah, I wouldn't blame little Dougie if he punched you smack dead in your nuts. Um, let's move on. All right, guys, so we got introduced to a new couple. <laughs> and she is Anissa and Jeff. Anissa is giving me Angela 2.0 minus the cigarettes. No, the smoker voice. She's giving me Angela 2.0. So um, she's a cougar, right? She's 51 years old. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, which I have it over here. She's 51, and I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that Jeff is 39. That picture of Jeff, he looks like a Looney Tune. I'm sorry, the man looks crazy as hell. So, um, Anissa, I was about to say Angela. Anissa, she is Angela 2.0. Anissa is Angela 2.0. Because it's Anissa and her cousin Penny. Penny is Tammy Faye. Is that what Angela's sister's name was, Tammy? Tammy Faye, Tammy Sue, something like that. She is she is Angela 2.0. She is literally Angela 2.0. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. She is Angela. She's Angela 2.0 minus the god dang cigarettes. So, um, child, Anissa, right? Anissa is a character. So, Anissa had an ex-husband, right? Anissa told us that she left her ex-husband because she was bored. And she met Jeff. She went on the prison pen pal website. She met Jeff 11 years ago. I'm like, 11 years ago? God, no. 11 years that that man has been in prison? I, well, actually, no. We'll talk about that in just a minute. 11 years, right, that you've known this man. You met him through a prison pen pal, right? So, Angela... See, I want to say Angela, Anissa, and Penny went to a bridal, you know, bridal store. The bridal consultant. <laughs> Their bridal consultant. She says, so, tell me a little bit about your fiance. Well, first of all, he's in prison. Oh, 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 oh. Her face was like, oh, okay. Then she said, um, so how did, you know, how did you guys get engaged? He asked me to marry him over the phone. What? He asked you to marry him over the phone phone i would have turned that proposal down so fast i would have been like i'm like um there's a bad connection can you hear me i i i'm losing my signal i, I can't hear you as soon as i heard will you i i can't hear you what you say repeat that like i would have played like i can hear you when you said will you marry me i would have played like i would have said oh my god i'm in a bad area you're gonna have to call me back tomorrow and when you come back tomorrow, I'm going to play the same game. Do not ask me to marry you over the damn phone. That is not romantic at all. We're going to talk about another proposal. <laughs> this episode was hilarious. Um. So, yeah, then we find out a little bit more about Jeff, right? So, 
Penny is like, really, Anissa, you're going through with this? He stood you up twice. I was like, oh, my God. Not the man stood her up twice. I was like, absolutely not. He stood her up twice. And, he, you know, he was supposed to come to her, and he never came. I was like, girl, you dumb. You, it's, you know, the old age old saying is, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Give me can't get God a third time. And, and Anissa, I keep wanting to say Angela, Anissa is on her third try. Girl, you use a fool. And then we see that this fool went and bought that. We, we see that this fool actually bought the damn wedding dress because her friend Kyle came over. I was like, this fool literally bought the wedding dress? Girl, you stupid as hell. You bought the wedding dress. Why? Just like Penny said, this man stood you up not once but twice. How do you know this won't happen again? Now, the thing with Penny and Kyle is they think that maybe either he doesn't exist or he's a catfish. But um, Anissa says to us that he is very much real. Now, she's tell and you know, um, Kyle's like, but you know, whenever I'm around, he's never calm when I'm around. So Anissa tells us the reason why, you know, he doesn't call like, you know, call as much as you know they would expect is because he's been in solitary confinement my like, girl what the hell does he what the hell has he done to be in solitary confinement who jesus these people these people let's move on you guys all right you guys deontay and nicole deontay 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 my dude my g you getting played by this snow bunny you getting played by her. I hope you know that. I hope hindsight is 2020 for you. Because this girl is playing you for a fit deal. So we see Nicole and she's talking to her mom, right? And girl, what the hell is that? On my watch. My bad, y'all. My watch just started vibrating out of nowhere. Oh, you have 10%. Okay. I was like, what the fuck? So Deontay and Nicole. So Nicole is getting her hair dyed by her mom, right? And um, we find out a little bit about Miss Nicole's mom, right? Ew, I know y'all not about to eat in the grass and McDonald's at that. Girl, that is just nasty. That is just nasty. That is nasty. Y'all like y'all literally about to sit in this grass and eat. Like, y'all ain't got no kind of towel, no picnic towel, no nothing. Ugh. And y'all know people walk their dogs in these parks, and the dogs go number two in the grass. I mean, even the animals go number two. And even, the, you know, the animals that, like, there are squirrels over here. There are so many different types of animals. Like, I've saw, what have I saw? I've saw wild animals over here, too. But y'all are really finna sit down here in this nasty grass and eat y'all nasty McDonald's food. Mm. Oh, hey y'all. Um, that just caught me off guard. My bad, y'all. Back to this show. So, Nicole's mom was married to a man and went before Nicole went to a prison, right? But she divorced that man and married her best friend Joe. I was like, oh, okay. So Deontay's dumbass. Deontay is a dumbass. So Deontay is going to go pick up Nicole, um, Nicole with two L's. Hoping to spend the night with her, the day with her, whatever. Deontay, you really don't see that this girl is not interested in you, right? So Nicole tells her mom that she's really uncomfortable around him. And she says, you know, I've been thinking about other people. I've been thinking about my ex, Zach. So she and Zach, they broke up. But the reason why they broke up is because she was getting ready to do that for a year bid. Okay, whatever, girl. Miss me with the BS. So then her mom tells her, like, Nicole... Just be honest with him and don't take advantage of him. I'm like, at least the mama got some sense. I guess people don't believe in karma these days. Like, I guess people just don't believe in it. So then Deontay pulls up to the house, right? And Deontay was like hella effing awkward. I was like, dude, really? I'm sorry, you guys, but Deontay just gives me that he rode the short yellow bus. No shade no shade whatsoever so then he tells you know her and his mom her him and her mom sit down right he tells her mom that he loves nicole 
And then, you know, he tells her mom that they're engaged, right? And she was like, well, I didn't know nothing about that. He says, oh, oh, well, you didn't know? Okay. So then, um, oh, my God. Because he was talking about other women. And, you know, she's like, oh, so are you talking about other women? He says, no. He was like, you know, I had I had this sex toy that I bought that I named it Colton Jr. that kept me from sleeping with. I was like, oh, my God. Did this dude literally just tell this girl's mama? about a sex toy he bought that he named Nicole Jr. And then that little 30 second blurb where he was talking to us about how to use the sex toy. I was like, uh, no, I don't want to hear this. I don't want to see this. Why? I think we all know how, I think a man knows how to use a sex toy. I think we all know how to use them. They are, I mean, they are very self-explanatory. I don't think you need to tell us how to use them. They are you know, I've never saw one that small before. The one that I've, the one that um, <laughs> I've used one, and they they I've used one. I know I'm going to look, getting a little bit too personal with you guys, but we family. I've used one before, no shame. But it wasn't it wasn't that size. It was it was an actual it was actual size. I don't know where I don't know who would want to use something that small. It's 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 creepy, and then the fact that he threw it in. I think I can. I think what I can't get past is the fact that the man threw it in the fucking dishwasher. I would never eat at his house after this. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. So Nicole goes and tells her mom, "You didn't tell me that you guys were engaged." She says, "We're not fucking engaged." And he says, "Did you tell my mom we were engaged?" He says, "Yeah." What do you call it? So Nicole was like, he gave me this little bitty ass in her interview. He get I, I wanted a ring, so he came down and he snuck it into the prison. And he brought me this little bitty ass ring, and he's like, you know, he says after I gave you the ring, I said, well, we might as well get married now, dude. That is not a proposal, and even if that was a proposal, that is the worst proposal I've ever heard. Nope, 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 nope. A little scrappy has the worst proposal known to mankind. You gonna marry a nigga or what? Scrappy has the worst proposal. You gonna marry a nigga or what? You gonna marry a nigga or what? I, I still never get over that. I still can't get over these people in this goddamn grass. That is nasty. That is nasty. But they look a little dirty. And, but they look a little dirty because I'm actually. Damn, I can't turn the camera around because I'm recording. Because I was gonna turn the camera around and let you guys see these people. Um, Deontay. Deontay, Deontay, you have got to know that you are getting played. I, I, I just, I just don't understand how you don't see it. But that's the, that's the review, you guys. Um, let me know what you guys thought about this episode. Leave your comments in the comment section below and um, subscribe. Um, 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 yeah, these little kids look dirty too. Ooh, Jesus. All okay, right, you guys. Like this video. Leave your comments in the comment section below. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell button so you guys are aware when I drop anything else. Share the video, and until the next one, stay safe, take care of yourselves, remember, wash your hands, oh God, but oh God, mm. wear a mask or not, whichever one you guys do, oh Jesus be blessed and highly favored, hallelujah, um, what else do I say, child, that's it, I'm off, because they threw me, they threw me for a loop, I'll see you guys for the um, rated of love.